Hey, this is sassy singer-songwriter Lauren Flaherty. This is part two of my three-part video series about music business conferences. And this is my top five do's for attending a music business conference. Number one is to do your homework ahead of time. You should already go online if you can and figure out who's speaking, what they're going to be talking about, and which panels you want to attend ahead of time. This isn't just being a nerd, this is doing your homework ahead of time so that if you do end up being able to ask a question to a panelist or even speaking with them afterwards, you have some idea of how you can take the most out of that opportunity and say something kind of smart instead of um so music uh yeah they've heard that before you want to go in ahead of time knowing what's up my second do is to ask real questions so that means that if you are lucky enough to get to the mic you should ask something that you either really want to know or something that benefits the group there's nothing worse than somebody getting up there and just making a pitch about themselves and their music. The panelists have seen it before, they're not impressed, and also now everybody in the room is pretty ticked off at whoever did that. So maybe there's 300 people in the room. You probably could have networked with a few of them, but now you've put them off. I feel that if you do have to say something about yourself to have the question make sense, Try to keep it to one sentence or less. It's a long day for everybody. Everybody's lining up behind you. Just like, try to be cool, okay? <laughs> My third suggestion in terms of doing your homework is to bring physical items with you. So I've noticed a difference between New York and Los Angeles. I feel that Los Angeles is still more open about accepting CDs, whereas New York started to not want them, you know, even a while ago. But I did have a one-on-one -on -one meeting with a mentor when I was at CMJ in New York, and he did ask for a copy of my CD at the end, which I was more than happy to give to him. So what I like to do is when I'm meeting with people to already have things ahead of time. So here I've got my CD. Now, maybe this is your style, maybe it isn't, but it's got my picture, it's got my name. If you go inside, it's got my contact information and it also has the track listing. So if, for instance, I give it to a DJ or something, they can play it, um, they can put it into their database and the metadata will come up so it doesn't just say track one and they have no idea of who it is. Everything comes right up. Uh, so if they say, oh, track four, that sounds great. Well, track four is called Junkies on the Train. And <laughs> so you're going to know that while it's clear for radio, it may not be good for everything. <laughs> so I let people know that early. Um, but so if I'm going into a meeting or even just meeting with somebody, you know, in an elevator or something, I just try to have this stuff ready. So whatever is most important, I put that on top. If what was most important was, say, this flyer of the show that I helped out with, um, this is my friend's startup, Big Personality Inc., um, and they did a showcase on Friday night. If this was the most important thing, this is what I'm going to have. Um, I also like to have my business card available. So here's just like, you know, blank thing that could be a business card um, because sometimes that is what's appropriate to give to somebody if they take the CD. You can try to give them your card, but your card can already be in the CD. The flyer should have all of your information. Um, when in doubt, I say give out your card. If you're talking to somebody and you know maybe they're just another person attending the sessions, but they seem like maybe they'd be cool to write with or something, I say just give them your card um, because that way, you know, maybe you guys can connect later or if something's not a match and you realize like, I'm not sure I want to take on this project, you can always politely decline. But I just feel like the most important thing to do with this stuff is to get your hat in the ring. But make it easy for people. You, nobody wants you to tie up somebody while you go through like your huge bag trying to find this. Like have it out if possible. Have a cool picture on it. Even though we're music people and we love sounds, 
visuals are still good and contact information is essential. My fourth tip is to be nice to everyone. And before you start thinking that maybe I'm just some kind of Pollyanna and that's why I do it, there is a business side to this as well. Um, I do like to think that I'm capable of being nice to people on my own and that so is everybody else. But it really is just good business to be nice to everybody. And part of the reason for that is that you really don't know who you're sitting next to or who they're connected to or anything like that. Um, one of the biggest opportunities I had at a conference when I attended CMJ a couple years ago, I noticed that in the program they mentioned that some people would be able to sing and perform live on the spot and I decided, you know, well ahead of time, I'm going to go for it, I'm going to do my best. So not only did I prepare by, you know, picking out my song, picking out the right key, making sure it was something that I could sing and play, you know, on the spot and could stop maybe 30 seconds in if they needed me to, I was nice to everybody. And part of how I ended up being selected was that a volunteer kind of put in a good word for me behind the scenes because she'd seen me be nice to everybody. And one of the panelists I kind of nudged somebody like, hey, you know, she was first in line. Why don't we try her? But again, I had a visual. I brought my big guitar case with me. Obviously, there was a guitar in it, but I had that on my back. I had that next to me. And then when I was able to take a seat in the front row, boom, my guitar is right there. If you space out because you're having a long conference or something like that, you say, who is that person again? The guitar is right there. The visuals help. And incidentally, I ended up finding out later that the volunteer who put in a good word for me had had a very successful performance career of her own and was just attending the conference because she felt like doing something new while she was new in town. So you really, really never know. So just be nice to everybody. My fifth suggestion is to work as a team but remember that you're still an individual. So I think that it's awesome to work as a team with conferences if you know you want to go with a friend or maybe some people that you're collaborating with but you're not in a band band where that's the priority. I think that's great. You can split your housing costs, your transportation costs. You've got somebody to go to that midnight showcase with, you know, or maybe you can help promote them. They can help promote you. That's good, and it's cool that you can also maybe, I'll go to the songwriting panel, you'll go to the publishing panel, where she'll no share notes at the end of the day. All of that is awesome, and it's excellent, and you know, if you're like me, you know, where maybe you're a lady attending this stuff by yourself, like, it's always good to have a buddy. But you do need to have an elevator pitch in mind ahead of time so that if somebody does ask you about what your project is or your music is, you want to be able to answer that quickly. You know, you want to be in a situation where it's cool that you're a team, but you understand that, you know, if I get to meet with so-and-so, I'm going to speak about my work as I would expect you to speak about your work. And then you can just kind of go from there. So have your friends and have the buddy spirit but have that elevator pitch in mind ahead of time. So your elevator pitch should say, hey, I sound like this meets that, and I've done X, Y, Z. Okay, that is as long as it should be. Memorize it ahead of time. Practice it in the morning. It will make you comfortable, and it will give you some credibility, and also just make it a little bit easier if you are switching from, well, be nice to everybody and be a good team player mode, when you get that moment, you want to know what you're going to say ahead of time. Okay, up next is the third part of my series, and it is Conference Don'ts.